After discussing hydropower and tidal energy in the previous video, it's now time to introduce you to a fairly new and exciting way of harvesting the power in the ocean. Ocean current and wave energy. The largest fraction of the Earth's surface is covered by water. To be more precise, 70% of our planet's surface is covered by water. The wind causes waves to form at the surface of the water. These can contain huge amounts of potential and kinetic energy. In addition, ocean currents continuously move water all around the world due to temperature difference and other effects. All this movement of water contains vast amounts of energy as well. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could harvest a small part of this energy and provide the world with this sustainable energy source? Although engineers have been studying and experimenting for many decades, these types of ocean energy technologies are still in an experimental phase. Maybe the ocean floor at some places will look like this in a few decades. To make a real estimation about its potential, we will look into the principle of these type of ocean energy. For ocean current energy, this is quite straightforward. The kinetic energy of a moving fluid, ocean water in this case, will be converted to electrical energy by a turbine. The formulas for a rough estimation are exactly the same as for wind turbines. The kin kinetic energy equals half times the mass times the velocity of the water squared. Kinetic energy per second is the same thing as power. The mass flow is expressed by the density of the ocean water times the area of the turbine and the velocity of the water. The area can be calculated with the diameter of the turbine. We combine these three formulas with the power coefficient of the turbine to find the effective power. The power factor defines the percentage of the energy the turbine can harvest from the kinetic energy in the ocean current at certain conditions. The big difference in outcome compared to a wind turbine is caused by the difference in the fluid density. Water is more than 800 times as heavy as air, so contains a lot more of kinetic energy at the same speed. Downsides of underwater turbines are corrosion and algae. So, how much is this for our turbine underwater? Let's do a small design calculation together. Let's imagine a turbine with a diameter of 20 meters, an ocean current velocity of 1.5 meters per second, which is below the average of the Gulf Stream in the Atlantic Ocean. We take as power coefficients 0.3, which is a fairly conservative estimation as well, if we compare it to wind and other hydro turbines. Using these numbers, we find a power of the turbine of 0.4 megawatts. This might seem low compared to a much larger wind turbine, however, big advantage of ocean current energy is that it is continuous. So it can provide a base load to the electricity grid where other types of energy are dependent on fluctuations of weather, seasons and tides. Note that exactly the same turbines, much smaller, are currently used to operate in shallow waters to make use of tides instead of ocean currents. Let's move on to wave energy. These snake-like machines are one of the many different mechanical concepts that are currently being tested to harvest wave energy. In these animations you can find different concepts, like on the left the so-called attenuators concepts, in the middle the concept based on oscillating wave surge converters, and on the right the concept based on point absorbers. The physics behind wave energy is more complicated than ocean currents, so we won't go into the details. This is because wave energy is not only composed of a kinetic energy, but also by potential energy. In this graph you can see a representation of a wave. The wave has a horizontal speed and the water itself also has a velocity which is different at every position. The dark blue part 
is above the average surface level and therefore has potential energy. This can be expressed as potential power per meter ocean perpendicular to the direction of the wave. In this formula, only the density, the height and speed of the weight need to be known. The formula of the kinetic energy, surprisingly, is exactly the same, making the total energy twice as high. The height of a wave depends on the duration of the wind and the speed of the wind, which scientists make visible in these kind of maps. This map shows a part of the Atlantic Ocean between North America and Europe. Here we can see that around the North Sea, the highest wave waves occur. Let's take a moderate estimate, a wave speed of 10 meters per second and a height of 1 meter. If you fill in these numbers in the formula, this results in a 25 kilowatt power per meter. Researchers have calculated this for different parts in the world and made this map. The areas between Scotland and Greenland, the south coast of Australia and South Africa and the west coast of Chile and Canada are perfect for wave energy. Furthermore, we can see our estimate of 25 kilowatt per meter is indeed pretty conservative. The total estimated potential for wave energy at places near the shore exceeds one terawatt. Considering the total energy consumption of the world of about se 17 terawatt, wave energy can play a serious role in a sustainable energy future. The oceans offer even more energy sources. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to talk about ocean thermal energy which uses temperature difference in different layers of the sea and osmotic power which harvests energy out of the mixture of salt and fresh water. A nice overview of energy sources the oceans deliver can be found at the website oceanenergy.tudelf.nl. This video lecture is followed by some exercises to get more feeling for the potential of these energy sources that are offered by our oceans. See you in the last video lecture of this week.